Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program, and I want to attempt my hardest rescue mission to date. Now, this is going to be hard for two main reasons. First, I want to rescue two Kerbals on opposite sides of a planet, and second, that planet is Eve, where the atmosphere is really thick and the gravity is also fairly high. Now, I decided to begin tackling the first issue in the vehicle assembly building here. Now, I'm going to need some way to get the Kerbals together, since making separate landers is going to be really impractical, and it's just easier to put them all in one ship. So, I started out here, I put down a liquid fuel tank, put down a nose cone, and I put down a command seat. I'm gonna just use the command seats instead of crew capsules since I'm traveling at low enough speeds it shouldn't really matter and also saves me a lot of weight and I'm putting down a lot of solar panels. This is that I can use a motor to power the plane and I want to use a motor since it doesn't rely on any liquid fuel or any type of fuel at all so instead of having to mine to keep refilling my fuel tanks I could just use the motor and power it off solar panels the entire way there. And I put down a couple of propellers but I decided to actually use four mainly because why not just seemed like a good way to go. Now I switched up the liquid fuel tanks in the middle for structural fuselages since they're a little bit lighter and I actually started to put in the wings here. Now, that wing was a little bit too big, and I put this one in instead, but I thought it was actually a little small, but I decided if I put down really large control surfaces like this, it should work pretty well. Now, I figured I could just use the two of these to do the roll and the pitch control, and with that, I needed to put in a tail, and I couldn't really find any good pieces to do this, so I decided to use the slanted nose cone in the back, and it actually had a pretty good look here, and once I put the tail fin on, it seemed to actually be fine. Now, I was pretty happy with all those control surfaces, and the next thing I wanted to do is put in the landing gear. Now, in order to do this, I actually need to be a little careful with the positioning because I do need this to land and it needs to land quite a bit once it's on Eve and it's landing on uneven surfaces a lot as well. So once I got on the runway, I wanted to give it a shot here and when I fired up the motor, it just tipped over. Now that actually wasn't the biggest problem here because I also noticed I have no forward thrust. It's not even attempting to pull me forward at all and when I'm just standing flat here, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So I decided to take the propeller blades and actually rotate them forward a bit and that seemed to solve that problem at least and it's actually starting to move forward. But you'll notice I'm still tipping over and it's because with just one motor it's torquing the body of the plane in the other direction and that makes it really hard to control. So I figured I might as well just add on a second motor like this. Really no reason not to. It should give me even more thrust but it does have the downside of requiring more solar panels. But I decided to give it a test here. Now the antenna fell off immediately because for some reason I decided to extend it while it was moving. But with that I actually couldn't get it off the ground. I was struggling quite a bit and eventually here it got too unstable and it just sort of fell apart. So I moved the rear landing gear closer to the front of the plane and that makes it easier for the back of the plane to actually torque itself up and get off the ground. Now it still wasn't very easy and required a little bit of a jerking motion but eventually got it and you'll notice it's actually started jerking around a lot and the propellers are stopping a lot as well and that's simply because I don't have enough solar panels but that's a really easy problem to solve and otherwise the plane seemed to be in really good shape so I was gonna launch that later but before I did that I needed to make the return ship. Now to make this ship I actually started out with just a really simple lander can on the top with a few parachutes, a heat shield on the bottom and a decoupler attaches to a couple fuel tanks. And that's for the second to last stage. Now I had a really high thrust to weight ratio and that was really important. Once I get near Kerbin, I need to kill a lot of my speed very quickly and that's gonna help with that. Now I decided to make it look a little bit prettier here and I also added on a few extra fuel tanks. When I started out, I was thinking of maybe using a nuclear engine, but the problem was there was a non-zero chance I was gonna be burning inside Eve's atmosphere and that's not really gonna work with a nuclear engine since it's really bad in the atmosphere. So I switched out for a swivel engine. Now with that done, I wanted to make the lander stage and this part was actually maybe going to be landing on Eve. So I put down a docking port in the bottom of the lander and I put two on top of the nose cones but that's when I realized that that's actually a really bad idea because once I disconnect the two side stages they're going to be disconnected from each other and I'm going to need some way to recombine them which just seems unnecessarily messy. So that's when I decided to put a docking port on the bottom of the return ship and I started building up the rocket from there. Now I put down a crew capsule and a few adapters and after I had enough tanks I started putting down some solid fuel boosters on the sides. Now starting out I have the usual problem of the solid rocket fuel boosters sort of doing whatever they want. But after locking them in a somewhat okay position, I started to launch off here and everything seemed good at first until this happened and then everything did not seem good. So it seems like the docking ports are not very strong and they sort of just do whatever they want, which is super cool. So I decided to put down some struts and once I did that, everything was locked together perfectly fine and I wanted to give it an actual test here. So it's burning up quite well here and in fact, it was much better than I thought. These solid rocket fuel boosters have a lot of fuel and I did my turn quite late here. And the reason for that was I actually was waiting for those solid rocket fuel boosters to burn out before I started to turn because it's a lot easier if I'm going straight up and down for them to just fall straight off of the rocket 
but I decided to risk it and they seem to fall off just fine. After that, I actually looked and my Ippo Apsis was really, really high. So I just waited a while, got up to it, and decided to start turning here and just continue doing my burn for a little bit. After continuing it for really not that long, I actually got a full orbit here and I had quite a lot of extra fuel in the tank. So with that done, I launched off the next stage here and this is the one that's going to get me to return home. It has a good enough thrust to weight ratio. It's not going to be too slow, but it should get the job done. And once I finished up burning that stage, I went to the next one here. This one was really fast and that's exactly what I wanted. So after I launched off that top stage and verified everything, I wanted to test launching this on EVE. Now ordinarily, I don't really mess around with the cheats menu at all, so I didn't really know what to expect here, but I just had to get my staging right and with that, I started to launch off EVE. And it actually seemed to be okay at first. Everything seemed to be accelerating just fine and I was kind of confused because it didn't seem to be that much harder than getting off Kerbin. But then I hit the atmosphere here and that's when things started to get a little bit more challenging. But it still wasn't that hard and I was a little confused as to what was going on. But once I launched off that bottom stage here, I started off on my main stage and everything still seemed to be going really well. Almost too well. But I continued going on here and I started to build up my orbit. I managed to get my apoapsis all the way up to 129,000 meters or so, but it was increasing even though I wasn't burning, which was weird, but I figured maybe it was some atmospheric effect. But once I was out of the atmosphere, it was still doing the same thing. But I continued to burn once I got up to the top, even though it was way higher than where I started. And I actually got my periapsis above 90,000 meters, which means I'm totally out of the atmosphere, but it started to shrink, which was similarly really weird. After a long time, it was all the way down to 50,000 meters. And I'll explain more exactly what I think is happening here in part two. Now, what I was interested in mainly here was just getting the orbiter into orbit around Eve. I'm gonna need it there anyway, so it's pretty much independent of whatever I decide to do for the actual lander. So I put down some xenon tanks after the main lifting stage, and this was hopefully to get me all the way to EVE, and if it could do it, it'd be great if it could actually get me a full orbit with EVE as well. But once I actually verified everything was working, I decided to give it a shot here. So of course, you basically already saw this rocket take off, so I'll go through it pretty quickly here, but it takes off off launch pad just fine, and doesn't get up quite as high this time, because it weighs a lot more. But after I got up high enough here, I started to burn again, and you'll actually notice I dropped the fuel tank straight down. Now this is much less efficient than before, but I had so much much extra fuel before that I realized I'm not really in any danger and just having the fuel tanks drop straight down is pretty much the safest way for me to do this. But of course after that, started to burn sideways and finally got my periapsis to actually exist and I pulled it above 70,000 meters. So after I got that full orbit, I waited till I got a transfer window with EVE, which is when EVE is about 60 degrees behind Kerbin. So with that done, I started to burn with my main engine here and I figured I'd just use all the extra fuel in that. Now it burned out pretty quickly, but with that done, now I have the Xenon engines and they look really cool, but they're really slow. But the good news is I actually don't need them to go that fast and I could do this in multiple orbits here. So I just burned as much as I possibly could in this first one and I also had a really good angle with the sun so I was getting the maximum amount of power here. And I burned it out and you can see I actually expanded out the orbit quite a bit. Now it wasn't that much but once I came around again you notice it grew a lot more this time. So of course with that done just had to do one more wrap around and this should be the last one that's needed. So just continued to do my burn here and this one got me all the way past Minmus orbit and finally I escaped. Now I'm really not close to done yet because once I actually get this escape, I need to continue to burn and pull my orbit into where Eve is. So I started to do my burn here and this took a very long time, so I had to speed it up quite a bit here. But after a while, I pulled it in just enough to get an encounter. So I just continued this and I pulled it in as much as I could and it seemed like about 5.8 million meters is the best I was going to do. So I just waited a little bit longer and I did a mid-flight correction burn and that pulled me in to right about 100,000 meters. Now I considered doing some arrow breaking maneuvers and actually pulling into about 80,000 meters, but I was worried about about exploding and also I had a bunch of extra fuel in my xenon tanks so I was reasonably confident I could do a standard capture here and actually just get away with it. So I continued to burn and I decided to wait a little bit further till I got to the periapsis and after that I continued to do my burn again and I actually did manage to get captured. So with that done I actually extended out my periapsis a little bit which might seem counterintuitive but the thing is when I'm killing my orbital speed I'm not doing it right on the periapsis. I'm doing it in a range around it which means that some of it is actually going to contribute to decreasing my periapsis slightly so after a very long time, it's eventually going to wear it down to about 100,000 again, or at least I was hoping to get around that range. So I did my burn here, you can already see my periapsis already down to 120,000 meters. Now I used that as my signal to actually stop burning and wait till it wrapped around again, and after that I did a bunch more burns until finally here I ran out of xenon gas. Now after that I checked out my orbit here and it was 
pretty good. It wasn't perfect, but it was definitely really good. And I got rid of the Xeon tanks and it was going to burn a little bit more. But then I realized to put the docking port on top of the engine. And in order to activate the engine, I need to get rid of the docking port. Now, I don't need the docking port in order to dock with the bottom ship since I'm just transferring some Kerbals. But ideally, I'd keep it. So I figured I could just save it for the future in case I needed that engine. I could get rid of the docking port. Otherwise, I'll keep it. But you've probably noticed already, I'm starting to get the plane in place here. And I want to get that all the way to Eve. Now, as you see here, I actually started out by copying the exact same design as before. And I started to put in the plane. Now, in order to get the plane all the way over to Eve, I was going to use a fairing and just completely encapsulate it and then hide it inside of this while it's in the atmosphere. After that, I added on some xenon tanks, but before I finished that, I added on a heat shield. So I finished off the xenon tanks, some ion engines, and to improve the stability while it's in the atmosphere, I added on some RCS thrusters. I added on way more monopropellant than I was ever going to need here, but I'm definitely not going to run out now, and I should have a really good amount of control to keep that heat shield pointing in the right direction. So of course, you know the drill by now. Straight to take off here, but this time, I decided to get a little creative, and I wanted to launch off the boosters the last second, but that didn't really go so well, so I had to try again here. So this time, I just stuck to the plan, and everything worked fine. So I just extended out my orbit, waited for a transfer window, continued to do my burn here to actually escape the Kerbin system. After that, got all the way up to EVE, but this time, I'm launching off all of my Xenon tanks early, and I'm pretty much just gonna rely on the heat shield to slow me down. I wasn't exactly sure if this was gonna work, but I figured it was at least worth a shot. So I started out here, completely retracted all my solar panels, and I started to fall into the atmosphere. And it didn't seem like much was happening at first, but clearly that previous stage really did not like the atmosphere. And that's when I started to see some arrow lines forming. So after that, I turned on my RCS thrusters to make sure everything was going to stay straight, and I started to fall into the atmosphere even further. I knew at some point I was going to get slowed down a ridiculous amount, and I was really worried I was going to start tumbling then, but I was losing enough speed that I was confident that this at least had a chance at working. So after a little while, I finally got my apoapsis down below 90,000 meters, and I'm officially definitely going to either fall in or burn up. So while doing my burn, I actually started to increase my height a little bit here, but eventually I started to fall in, and now is where I'm doing my final descent. Now I was curious where I was going to fall on EVE, and it was really far away from both of my Kerbals, but I figured it couldn't be really that bad to fly over there. So I started to fall in even further here, and now is when I'm losing speed very quickly. My thrusters are kind of going crazy here, but I actually did manage to stay perfectly straight, and after I got down to about 200 meters per second, I decided to get rid of the heat shield and just start to normally fall in. Pretty much, there's no way I can get going that fast, because the atmosphere just gets so thick. And after falling another about 10,000 meters, I wanted to try turning on the propellers, but it wasn't really working. In fact, I wasn't really able to pitch up at all here. So I decided to fall in a bit further. I knew this basically had to work at some point. So eventually I got down to about 4,000 meters and it actually did start to have some stable flight. Now I had to pick one of the Kerbals to start to fly to and I decided to start with Valentina. This was because she was so high up that my orbiter actually never passes through her. So if I wanted to get my lander to go up to it, I need to do a bunch of tricky maneuvers. So starting with her was gonna be a little bit easier. Now I took a very long time flying over there. It was a lot worse than I I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't that bad. So after only a few hours, just over the horizon, I could barely see the marking of where I was supposed to go. So I just flew over there a little bit further, and I got a lot more clear once I got closer. And after that, it was time to go for a descent here. Now going for a landing, I was a little worried about it, but I did know there's some flat areas generally around here. So this is going to go for a quick landing here at sea level. Now trying to touch down here actually did seem to be fine, but then the plane like decided they really didn't like the ground, and then it flipped over, which was super cool. So I had to do a reload here, and try to do landing again, but this time I really didn't know what to change. It seemed like it just decided to do that, so I figured maybe a more gentle landing will make that not flip over, and I could at least solve the issue once I'm on the ground. So I hovered over the train for quite a while until eventually I got brave enough to actually touch it, and it seemed to be really bad, so I ended up hitting the pause menu to kind of consider my actions, and my first thought was just to turn off the two landing gears on the wings and hope that that would help things a bit, and it did seem to. It was not solving the problem, but at the very least things were better. Then what I decided to do is make the very back landing gear have almost no strength at all, and finally it seemed to be mostly stable. It was still vibrating a bit, but it was at least manageable. So I took my Kerbal and started to walk all the way over to the plane. This wasn't really that bad. I think it was like a five minute walk or something, and for the most part everything seemed to go pretty smoothly. So after a quick marathon, it was time to board the plane, and in order to do this, I actually had to get a little creative. 
The first step was to retract all of the landing gear, and that was so that I was actually gonna be able to grab onto something. Now, at first, that wasn't that great. We just sort of clipped into the landing gear, so I ended up climbing up on the wing, and that seemed to be a lot better. But this time, I tried climbing up on the solar panels, and that was definitely a bad move. Now, I did manage to board into the seat, but it actually managed to also break the solar panels, which means I'm really not gonna be able to get off the ground. So I was a lot more careful this time, managed to board the command seat while I was just barely on the landing gear. Nothing seemed to be broken, so I put back down the landing gear and started to flip the propellers on again. Now, getting off the ground ended up being a lot easier on Eve than it was on Kerbin. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe the better atmosphere got me a lot more leverage over the plane, but it seemed to generally be better. And now I just had to do that same flight basically again. So here we go. Now, this entire thing was done at 540 times speed, which is definitely a huge speed up. And in fact, here, I'm actually starting to land and I'm not near my destination at all, but it was three o'clock in the morning. And also the sun was starting to get pretty low in the sky. And I was having a lot of trouble keeping the propellers actually moving. So up after landing, I ended up just doing a time warp here and I was waiting till just barely morning. This would allow me to have the maximum amount of flight time here. And if I was really lucky, I should be able to get to the last landing site. So taking off here, I was doing it a lot slower. Lower, mainly because I couldn't turn up the propellers as fast because the sun is so low in the sky. But of course, I just kept flying here, and unfortunately, I was limited to only about 100 meters per second. But fortunately, the longer I flew for it, the more power I could actually apply to the engines, and I was going about 120 by the end of it. Now, unfortunately, I did have to land once again because the sun was getting a little bit too low, but at least the next leg should be extremely possible to do in one day. So after landing, I just warped around again, and at sunrise, I took off once again. Now, I flew over this crater and Finally here, I managed to get all the way to my landing site. But I noticed it was on a mountain, which was gonna be really hard to land on. So I decided to actually divert slightly and land relatively close to the mountain on this flat area right next to it. This will make the challenge of getting my lander to stay straight up be a lot easier. And after I get this all down here, I need to drop off one of the kerbals. After that, I just took off again and I was heading right for that mountain. Originally, I wasn't planning on getting off the ground because there's a little bit of risk associated with that, but I managed to accidentally take off. So I figured, oh well, might as well benefit from the extra speed. I got a safe landing and nothing seemed to be shaking, thankfully, and I managed to get all the way over to my lander. Now, I very quickly ran over to it, I lowered the landing gear, and I boarded the seat. After that, just had to take off one more time, and decided to actually take off this time, since it was going to be a lot faster. And after getting a safe landing, I did about the last kilometer, just on the ground. And with that, got all the kerbals next to each other. So guys, thanks for watching. And the next part, I'm going to get the lander down and get these kerbals out of here. This was presenting some unique problems already, though, and I think it'll be pretty fun to watch. So of course, if you liked the video, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else you want to see me do, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. And otherwise, until next time.